Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. An ECG watch. Wow, that sounds pretty impressive. I see why you see. Do you see why I see? Uh, what am I talking about? See why you see. I see why you see. See why you see official store. These are the guys that are bringing us this ECG heart rate monitor smartwatch. Now, the first time we encountered these guys was back in November. No, May. May of 2019. But they are back with us again. Welcome back, see why you see. And uh, with bringing us this interesting... ECG watch with a, an app that's going to give us ECG reports right on the app. Here's the specs for this uh, little device. It's a small amount of memory. It's got step counter, fitness tracking, sleep tracking, push messages, stopwatch, all these things. No camera in it. A little bit of RAM, professional waterproof. That doesn't mean a lot in terms of dunking it underwater. Small little battery, 240 by 240 screen, 1.4 inch silica gel strap. It's a basic watch. An additional function is a flashlight, it says. Well, that could be kind of fun. Let's dive into it. Nicely wrapped. So I got my little slitter to get us going. And we'll take a look at what is called the... Uh, SE03, that's the model number, although it's hard to find on their actual product page. Uh, but that's what we're calling it here, the SE03, because it's on the box. Plain black box when you open it up. Whoo, let that air out. Is a hair on it? I think that's from me. And <laughs> we've got the watch inside. Okay, okay, kind of fun packaging. It's all wrapped up in a little bag. That's fun to unwrap on Christmas Day, wouldn't it be? And we've got a uh, simulated screen on the front to give you an idea of what it should look like. We can remove that as well. Deeper inside, we've got your obligatory charging cable. And it's not a dock, which makes me happy. I like it when it's just a magnetic couple. That's great. Let's uh, take the strap off. Okay, it's got one of these slip through the hole kind instead of a buckle. And it is a soft rubberized TPU type. Oh, okay. And it's recessed. Look, it's got a, a matching guide on it so you won't confuse it and mix it up with your other chargers. USB connection. And it holds the watch well. There's the two plates on the back for ECG. And it's really hyping it. So hopefully we're going to get some really good ECG charts. Here's the other electrode. It's got the ECG symbol on it. Power button. It twirls. I doubt that it actually functions, though. And inside, the, ah, come back here, the manual that starts in English here. And here's a quick look at it. The uh, QR code to download the tethering app, but of course we will have a link in the show notes directly to uh, to that. Some more descriptors of how to use the watch, just in case you lose your manual or you're really thinking about buying a watch like this. It's really wise to take a moment to look over the manual, see if there's anything I ended up skipping over or misguided uh, you in the uh, review. You can pick it up for sure in here. There's the details on the ECG measurement and how you go about doing it. Problems, precautions, and Chinese. As usual, we'll charge it up then and uh, test it out for you. You ready to go? Let me, let me mention one thing before we actually begin on here. Wow, there's a lot of colorful icons in there. That's pretty cool. One of the most important things to realize when you're picking out a uh, smartwatch is you also are picking out the app that goes along with it. And one of the best features of this particular watch we're going to look at today is actually the app. So I've got it on my arm and I'm going to actually um, use it here to show you the different measurements. Let's walk through what you see when you're looking at the watch if you're just wearing it by itself. You got a few different watch faces. That's a good one. 
uh, find your phone, overall settings, and a lock screen thing. You've got music, and you've got a little flashlight that'll light it up if you have the brightness turned down, which is what we've got right here. We'll get into all of these things a little bit later. There's the uh, watch face I'm using right now, animated, heart rate, step count, shows the battery's fully charged. By the way, that is not an uh, active uh, heart rate chart. It's a, just a simulation for the, uh, the particular face. You go left or right, you get into different things. There's exercises like running, cycling, even swimming. Yep, you can swim with this waterproof IP68 watch climbing and so forth not many and none of them are connected to gps so as a fitness watch it's not really great um, but it does a lot in the health arena you have messages if you have any that are pushed from the phone which show up here and this is interesting here's last night's sleep time and it's showing you a graph and this starts to allude to what we're going to see in the tethering app which is really fun you got um your breakdown of uh your sleep into the short and long or deep and light all those kind of things and um, not really information you can use so much as to just see some uh, respective information on the screen then you get over here to heart rate wow it's kicking off uh, its first reading was high, probably because I'm moving around, but it'll slowly come down and settle. But you saw how it instantly started giving you a reading. This is what is commonly masked by a lot of other watches that show nothing for maybe about 15 to 20 seconds, and then they pop on a heart rate. It's because they've got to get rid of the early noise aspect of it. Here, I believe it's showing my high and my low, and there it froze at 88. That's what it's saying my current heart rate is. Now, here's another one. It looks like a heart, but it's actually ECG, and this is where I'll be able to show you the ECG chart live. We're back to step count here now with calories burned and whatnot, and then the watch face. And these things all just rotate around a circle. And back to the beginning. And coming up, you get into your app drawer where you've got to find your phone and flashlight like we saw at the top, a countdown timer, and a stopwatch. You have weather for your area pushed from the uh, phone. Always in Celsius. Can't change that. Uh, sun rise no these are predictions for the next few days right here but you do have that weather entry you have blood pressure and blood oxygen we'll be doing that but from the app instead and then overall settings which you could get to from above you can get to for here and here you go into all of the different things it's the seo3 is the device there's your basic information the binding app okay and then there's the download app so this is the QR code you'd use to download iBand, which is the app we're going to be using. And the binding app is usually when the app wants you to point the camera at the, the QR code on the watch to bind it. I didn't need to do that. I could just do it directly. But it's set up for that. You also have uh, the selecting of a dial, your, which we'll get to. Uh, your overall brightness, which is here. Hello. Oh, there we go. Okay. There's the lowest setting, which is too low almost to see on the camera. It's great for at night. And here's our brightest bright, which is not super bright, like some of the watches we've seen. So this one will be a little bit of a challenge outdoors, uh, but it's okay for basic indoor use. Clear the data, reboot the device, shut it down. All that stuff is part of settings. And you go into select a dial. You get into all of them, which you could also get into just by pressing and holding. And you have a, a variety of different dials. There's a kind of a fancy, colorful one with splashing paint. Not much information. I can press and hold and go over here. Another really nice big dial. Easy to see the screen pretty much from any angle. Uh, you got the twist to see the time obviously working. And of course, I got a couple more. There's an analog one. And I think there's a total of five. Then you've got this uh, really nice nighttime one. That's what I used last night. 
uh, although it didn't even light up because it's got in the app the ability to shut that down uh, on diff different time uh, period. Okay, and we're back to the only one that has some reasonable data, heart rate, step count, battery uh, level, and of course time on it. Now, let's integrate this together with the app to show you how it really works. You can get to this app by scanning the QR code, using the link in the show notes, or just typing iBand into your Google Play Store. Any which way you get to it, you'll uh, be bringing up this home page right here. Now you see I've got marked out uh, the location of where the weather is uh, being um, monitored in Centigrade uh, within the app. And that'll update, of course, in your current location. We have a tab here that allows us to go into an overall settings page and an arrow back. And then we have only this one page, but we have several panels that we can swipe across. There's no tabs across the bottom to move into the different categories. So it's laid out a little different than other apps. We'll get into that in a moment, but let's walk through this. Here's our step count of the day, basically, with mileage and calories and the time of day and how many steps Mr. Sedentary here took um, since midnight when I guess I got up and went to the bathroom a couple of times um, and then this morning so far. You can slide over here now. We get into last night's sleep time, and this is messed up for some reason. It's only showing one hour of sleep. I fell asleep just before midnight and woke up an hour later, and it's got this chart here. If I touch it, though, look at this. Awake, start, awake, end, awake, duration, falling asleep, waking up, and awake, duration. Not sure. I don't have enough data meaningful to, to do that. And it's a little different than what it shows on the watch in the sleep time. So this one I don't fully understand, but it's kind of interesting. I believe we're going to have little boxes in here, markings between here and here on your awake and asleep and deep sleep and all that kind of stuff. I slide over here now and I get into the heart rate. Now this is where I want to show you where this thing shines. Those of you who are athletes and want to push yourself to a high heartbeat and then look at your recovery uh, time, uh, how does your heart rate change from when you stop exercising over time in those first few seconds? We've never ever had a band, a watch, or an app that could do that well. You see down here, look at this. I've got a kind of a chart here. I'm going to measure it now. I'm going to hit measure. Now pre pretend I just finished exercising and um, it's going to begin giving me a heart rate reading. I've got average, minimum, and maximum. There you go. Now look at the chart. You see the chart, what it's, ha what's doing. On the watch, you can see the heart rate changing. But down below, you can actually see the trajectory of your heart rate. Now, I could go out and walk up and down the steps or get a bunch of exercise, and it would start high and start coming down low. But I'm not. But you get the drift, right? Okay, good. I'm still sedentary. Not really. I do get some exercise, as you can tell from some of my other videos on my heart uh, heart health. I need to do that. And when it's done now, it's added that new dot right here. But during the time it was taking the reading, we can actually get a plot on here. And if whatever your phone is for making a screenshot, you take a screenshot when it's done the whole thing, you'll be able to capture that other than just one single point. So that's a measurement ability that you can do in a uh, heart rate, which to me is a big selling point, perhaps the main thing for this watch app combination, because I've never seen it anywhere else. Even in the highly sophisticated um, AmazeFit type bands that cost hundreds of dollars. The next one is blood oxygen. There's been no activity for the day. Now this one I cannot launch remotely, sadly. So this is not a good one, you know, for giving someone who's Hey, it's time for my sound therapy. <sighs> anyway, I'm going to come over here to... Uh, no, I'm not, because you can't get to it through the cards. You have to come down here and go to blood pressure and blood oxygen. I'm on the blood oxygen. I'm going to launch it from here. And you see, it showed me one. Now it vibrated, and it's doing another measurement. You've got an animated graphic going on here. And I am getting one single point. And there it goes. Look at that. Real time. That's that same chart, just like heart rate. 
there. And look at, look at this. I'm getting blood oxygen down to a tenth of a percent. This, so far, is the most detailed information on blood oxygen that I've seen. So even though you can't remotely trigger it from the app, if you have someone who's having a challenge with blood oxygen levels and you're concerned about uh, if they fall too low, this one is uh, really good in giving you a chart. It just vibrated. You see the whole thing disappeared, and now it's settled on one final point and one final reading, two-tenths of a percent. Awesome. Blood pressure. What does it do there? Let's find out. Blood oxygen, blood pressure. There's my previous reading. It's got another funny little bouncing graphic going on. It's in the process of starting to get the data. What are we going to get? Are we going to get one reading? Are we going to get a chart? There's the last time systolic and diastolic reading. It's still working. And of course, here's the big reading from the last one. It shows kind of a circle, and I'm not sure what that semicircle is supposed to represent. Maybe high blood pressure is when it's completely closed and low is really low, and where you're supposed to be is in the middle. Okay, it vibrated. It gave me another reading, systolic, diastolic. It gave me a final reading. I did not get a chart, which is cool because you really can't get a chart for blood pressure if you think about it and how it measures it. You can only get one value at the time that you're taking it. So this one is going to accumulate these little bar charts that you can kind of monitor how big they are, how close they are, all that stuff across the, across the whole uh, panel here. The next one and final one here we want to get to, I believe that's the final one, yep, is ECG. And you see it has measure on the screen. So I'm going to set this down. You're going to watch this chart. Over here is a little button on the side. Two electrodes below. I don't even have to touch the watch until I hit measure. Once I hit measure, it's starting and I need to touch that button. Now check it out. On the screen of the watch, I'm getting a heart rate. And, I mean, I'm getting a waveform, and I'm getting a heart rate based on my ECG chart. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in the middle of the chart. There, there. You, can, you should be able to see them both. I'm going to try to hold relatively still to give you a good reading. So if you're out in the field and you're concerned you're going into AFib or you've got a flutter or whatever might be happening with your heart and you're not near your phone, you can take this ECG and see the live chart. Have I got you buying this one yet? I am. I certainly would. Sorry about the focus. The camera's only going to grab one fo in focus. Uh, and there it's done. Now I want to show you a little bit more. Oh, gosh. How am I going to do this? I'm going to put it up here. Okay, there we, we've got it, but I want to go into measure, and I want to start it over again. I'm going to press it and hold it like this. There. Okay, now we're getting both of them showing on the screen. Let's wait till we get a heart rate. Okay, you see how they're tracking with each other. I'm going to wiggle it a little now, make some noise. Okay, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to put it back on. Are you impressed? If you're not impressed, go away. <laughs> no, no, I, I would never send you away. Some of you guys I know takes a whole lot to impress. And I'm, I'm, I'm easily impressed. I really am. But right now, right now, I am seriously impressed. The only thing I wish this puppy had was the green, uh, sorry, the red diodes and was doing the blood oxygen uh, readings with all of the fancy Lorenz scatter diagrams and it could do sleep apnea reporting and all that, but it doesn't. It's stake to claim, once again, is this real live ECG chart that capture and is the way it handles blood oxygen and heart rate in its instantaneous graph as it's determining the final value. Those are revolutionary new things. Okay, that's all of the panels you see on here. And finally, we get in here. This is just a connector disconnect it. Here's your user info that you can put all of your different uh, parameters in. I've just left them uh, flat, but you can have it in pounds and uh, inches and stuff as well as uh, metric. And then you hit save after you change it. You've got your reminders that you can set up with it. Um, 
We have done the I-band before, but not very often. Not too many people have used it, and I don't know why. This is great. The Do Not Disturb mode you can set for, like I kind of, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or vice versa, so it won't be disturbing you. And your smart screen enabled, so you twist your wrist to see the time. Uh, you can have that enabled, and when it is enabled, it will be disabled during the Do Not Disturb mode, so it won't light up at night. Very smart. Heart rate settings, look at this. You can change your measurement from uh, your uh, repetitive continuous heart rate measurements from once every two hours, basically, down to once every five minutes, which is what I've got it set on here for the continuous heart rate uh, chart. Uh, screen settings, high, normal, and low. There's low brightness. There's high brightness. I'm riding it always on high, and it's still a little low. Another little drawback. It's not super bright. Um, it only has these five dials, but it, the potential is here that if they wanted to put more in here in the app from the server that you could select more. There's no customization ones. You basically just have those available. You can do remote camera, and in the more settings, you can set goals, set your units, time, data output is where it stores your iBand data, uh, database.xls, so you actually can get to the data that you're collecting on the watch. Not sure. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take a techie to figure out what to do with it. Reboot it, clear it. You have an overall power savings mode as well, if you want to turn that on in here. Really sophisticated. Yes, we do have third-party access for We Run. Not Strava, not Runtastic, not Google Fit, but at least We Run. It'll export stuff too. App version firmware updates are available on here as well. And that's it. So you've seen the app, you've seen the watch. The uh, TPU band is really nice and soft and easily pliable. It's uh, the Apple style of watch band. You see, it's not the pin kind. And uh, the two plates for ECG are there on the bottom and the one on the side. And great, great ECG capabilities. So with that said, I see why you see... Yeah, I see why you see. That's the name of the company. The company is CYUC, and uh, this is their ECG heart rate monitor smartwatch. Or should I say, this is the incredible I band watch with a sensor node you wear on your arm to get you exquisite data in a way you've never seen before. Either way you look at it, for about $25, $27, you got yourself a really nice health monitoring band doesn't do it all, but what it does, it does better than anybody else. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again soon.